Let's talk about KNRS neighbors algorithm. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use a subset of our city's data set. I'm sampling 30 examples from the city's data set and I'm calling it small cities. Now from the small cities, I'm sampling one example and I'm calling it one city. Now this one city is going to be our test example. This is going to be our test point. And I'm getting rid of this one city from small cities and that's going to be our training set. So let's look at how our data looks like. So all these blue points and these red triangles are our training data points. And this black circle is our query point or test point. And what we want to do is we want to predict the class of this black point. Now that we know how to calculate distances between points and given a query point how to find its closest neighbor, an intuitive way to predict the label of a given query point is finding its closest neighbor and using its label as the label of the query point. For example, in our case, we want to predict the label, the target of this black point. Now we find the closest neighbor of this black point. In our case, the closest neighbor is this red triangle and the class associated with this red triangle is USA. So we assign the same class to our query point, which is this black circle. Now we don't have to be restricted to just one neighbor. We can also try uh, multiple neighbors. The variable we use for number of neighbors is k and that's why this algorithm is called k nearest neighbors. So in the first case, our k was one and that is we were just looking for one nearest neighbor. And now let's try k equal to three. Now in this case, we will look at three nearest neighbors of this black point. And if you look at it carefully, in this particular case, our first neighbor is this red triangle, but other two neighbors are these blue points. And the class associated with these blue points is Canada. So we have one neighbor whose class is USA and two neighbors whose class is Canada. And if we take majority vote, then the class of our query point, this black point is going to be Canada. So with number of neighbors, our class might change. Now, how do we do it with scikit-learn? First thing we do is we import K neighbors classifier. Then as usual, we create a class object of K neighbors classifier and the hyperparameter here is n neighbors. That is how many neighbors we want to consider when we carry out classification. Then we are fitting the classifier and for our test point, as we saw before, uh, when we were considering only one neighbor, the prediction was USA. But when we consider three neighbors, then the prediction is Canada. A question for you, is it a good or bad idea to consider an odd number for k? Why or why not? Also, I would encourage you to try different values of k in this particular example and see what predictions you get. So the point here is that our prediction of our query point changes with different values for n neighbors. So a natural question is that how do we pick n neighbors? What happens when we play around with n neighbors? Are we likely to be overfitting with higher or lower value of n neighbors? Let's examine this on our city's data. Now I'm creating our X and Y from our original city's data. I'm also creating train and test splits from our city's data. And now I'm going to try K neighbors classifier with K equal to one. So I'm creating this K neighbors classifier object here 
by passing n neighbors equal to 1. I'm carrying out cross-validation here, and here are the results. What do we see here? Our train scores are 1 in all folds, and our test scores are much lower than that. And remember, these test scores are actually validation scores. So our train score is 1 in all folds, and our validation score is much lower than that. And the gap between train and validation score is much higher here. So this seems to be the case of overfitting. Now let's see what happens when k equal to 100. Again, I'm creating k neighbors classifier object here. I'm passing k as 100 here, and I'm carrying out cross-validation. What we see here is training score has dropped a lot compared to here. Test score, that is validation score, also has dropped. But now the gap between train score and validation score is much lower. So this seems to be the case of underfitting. Let's explore some more values for n neighbors. I'm starting with n neighbors equal to 1. And as we saw before, the train score is 1 here and validation score is 0 0.75. Now here I'm showing you mean train score and mean validation score from our cross validation. So this seems to be the case of overfitting. Our train score is very high and validation score is much lower compared to that. And the gap between train and validation score is quite large. Now, let's try n neighbors equal to 11. Now here, we see that our mean train score has gone down before it was 1. And mean validation score has gone up. So that, that seems better because now the gap between train score and validation score has reduced. But now if we keep increasing this, our train score is going down and our validation score is also going down. So for n neighbors equal to 101, our train score is 0 0.60 and our mean validation score is 0 0.60. So both train and validation scores are quite low and the gap between them is very small. So there is no gap actually, they are the same. So this seems to be the case of underfitting. So what we want to do is we want to find some value for n neighbors, which gives us a reasonable training score and the best validation score. Let's look at decision boundaries created by k nearest neighbors classifier. We are going to try three different values for n neighbors, 1, 11, and 100. So this first plot on the left shows the decision boundary when n neighbors is equal to 1. If we look at the decision boundary, it's a very pointy decision boundary. It's trying to get each and every training example correct. And that's why our mean train score is 1, but our mean validation score is not that high. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if we look at this plot on the extreme right, this is the decision boundary for n neighbors is equal to 100. And if we look at the decision boundary, it's a very generic decision boundary. It's getting many, many training examples incorrect. So it's mislabeling many training examples. And it's not really a good fit on the training data. And because of that, our training score is very low. And our validation score, our mean validation score is also low. And there is no real gap between train score and validation score. Now, if we look at the decision boundary when n neighbors is equal to 11, this middle plot, then we see that our train score is uh, 0 0.82 and validation score is 0 0.8. So it is kind of a sweet spot probably. The decision boundary is not that pointy and it's not trying to get each and every training example correct. And as a consequence, training score has dropped a bit compared to n neighbors equal to 1, but our validation score has improved. 
So we kind of want to find a sweet spot like this. So with n neighbors equal to 1, we get overfitting. The decision boundary is much complex. Whereas with n neighbors equal to 100, we get underfitting in this particular case. And our decision boundary is much simpler. And we are misclassifying many training examples here. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, right? When we want to label, when we want to predict target of a new query point, then we are taking average of 100 nearest neighbors. So this is kind of going to be similar to random guessing, especially in this particular case, because we do not have many data points. So the question is, how do we pick this n neighbors? And our usual answer for this is doing hyperparameter optimization. Here I am doing exactly that. So I have different values for n neighbors and I'm doing our usual for loop. I am carrying out cross validation for different values for n neighbors. And here are my results. So for different values for n neighbors, I get different mean train scores, mean cross validation scores. I'm also showing standard deviation for cross validation score and train score here. Now let's plot our train and validation scores. Here we have n neighbors on our x axis and accuracy on the y axis. And these are our usual mean cross validation and train scores. As we can see here, there is a sweet spot somewhere near n neighbors equal to 10. Now let's see what that is. Okay, so we did our hyperparameter optimization. We got the best hyperparameter value for this hyperparameter n neighbors, which is 11. So now we are ready to assess our model on the test data. So let's do that. Here I'm training our KNN classifier with n neighbors equal to 11, which gave us the best validation score. I'm fitting our model on X train and Y train, and then I'm calculating our test accuracy on X test and Y test. Our test accuracy here is 0 0.90, which is kind of surprising. It's much higher than our mean cross validation score and mean train score. But this might be just because our data is too small. 